Hi friends, welcome back. Welcome back to my channel. Today we have a special collaboration. We are going to be doing a Friendsgiving collaboration. I asked a few of my friends over here in the YouTube community, as well as my social media community, uh, you know, just friends that I, I've been with online for quite a while now, if they wanted to join me in doing my first Friendsgiving collab here on YouTube. I thought it would be a great way to uh you know introduce everybody to different channels as well as uh, social media uh, accounts and um just share some of our favorite things to make for the thanksgiving you know the holiday season so as you know rick musselman has been on my youtube channel before he creates some delicious cocktails and he'll be doing another seasonal one for us today I am going to be making kind of a mix match of two recipes and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. And then I'm also going to be joined by Doug and Tammy over at Everyday uh, Getaways and they are going to be making, let me make sure I got it right, baked twice baked sweet potatoes. I, I believe that's what they told me. And then my friend Kathy at home, she is going to be making a pumpkin icebox pie, which sounds delicious. So I'm going to list everybody's YouTube channel down below and you can just go ahead, follow the train <laughs> uh, one after another so you can get to see what they've created for our Friendsgiving collab. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Joanne. I do lifestyle, I do Disney recipes, regular recipes, and I also talk about my son's autism. Uh, so I hope that after today's video, if you are just stopping by here today for the first time, that you'll feel um, like you want to join me. <laughs> and please hit the subscribe button um, so you can, you know, become part of my family over here. So. If you are not new here and you're, you're back again, welcome back my BFFs. Let me tell you what I'm gonna be making today. Okay, so for today, I'm gonna to be making a, uh, well, a pumpkin cheesecake, but I am not gonna do it in a typical pie tin. I'm actually gonna be doing in individual cupcake, cupcake wrappers. So they'll be actually a little more like um, pumpkin cheesecake cupcakes. I don't know. Anyway, I got this recipe kind of like a mix up from um, one of my friends online, Liz, who was uh, telling me yesterday about a recipe that her mom makes um, similar to this. And I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to, I liked, I loved her recipe. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, change it up a bit and I'll show you what I'm going to do here. It is very simple. Um, all you're going to need is um, pumpkin puree cream cheese, um, two packages of cream cheese, a half a cup of sugar, um, some ginger snap cookies, and that's what I'm gonna be using as the base for the cupcake. And vanilla extract, pumpkin spot pie spice, yeah, pumpkin pie spice, as well as some nutmeg, and you can also put in some cloves if you wanted to. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna point the camera um, at the bowl so you can see what I'm doing, and let's get started. Okay, so. Um, I already put one package of the cream cheese in there. I'm gonna go ahead. I really should have let this sit out and soften for a little bit, but it's okay. Um, we're gonna use the mixer anyway. Um, but I, um, the original recipe that my friend Liz was telling me about, and uh, kudos to her mom, because it sounds like it, it's a delicious uh, recipe and easy to make. She does a version of a, um, like pie filling with a vanilla wafer cookie. What is it called? The Oh my God, I can't remember the name. When I remember, I'll let you know. But um, I thought that was a great idea too. But because this is coming up on Thanksgiving, I thought that I would try and do something a little more, you know, uh, seasonal. Not that that wasn't either. So I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but anyway, let me just um, break up this a little bit. And then I'm going to need to wash my hands. <laughs> so it's two packages of cream cheese. And I, right now, I have um, my cupcakes, uh, the liners ready to go. And I have a 12, yeah, 12 cupcake pan right here. And I think this can make up to 24. So um, 24 cupcakes. So 
Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and add the pumpkin to it. How did I think this was gonna fit in there? I'm really batting a thousand today. Oh boy, okay. Mm, the pumpkin smells good. I know some people either love it or they don't. I am one of the ones that love it. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna. Uh, this is you're gonna you are gonna use your mixer, so I'm just gonna leave it like that. And we're gonna go ahead and add in um, the vanilla extract, which is a half of a teaspoon. And I hate when they say a half a teaspoon because I f always feel like that's not enough, but we'll see what happens. Okay, and the sugar. And I do need to get my, my mixer. Let me go get the hand mixer and then we can get this all mixed together better. I'm also going to add the eggs. Let me take this napkin over here. And the only thing that I'm looking at the recipe right now, and it doesn't tell you. Oh, it does say cinnamon. I forgot the cinnamon, so I have to get that. That is a half, a half a teaspoon? Yeah, another half a teaspoon. Um, but it doesn't give you the measurements on doesn't give you the measurements on the um, the pumpkin pie and the nutmeg. So I'm just gonna do that is really strange. Am I missing something? Um, I don't know. And of course, it's cinnamon, so you could put more than a half, right? Who says it has to be a half? That's what I always say. But maybe I'll just do a shake. No. <laughs> I'm going to be a rebel and I'm going for a half. If I could ever get it out. No, sometimes, sometimes these little things, it's just not worth. Okay, so I, I did put a little bit, so I'll just do it this way. Okay, and I'm going to do a half a teaspoon of the pumpkin pie spice. And I'm gonna tell you right now that probably after I do this, I will figure out where the measurement is for the amount because that's how I do things here. Right. Okay, perfect, if I say so, <laughs> myself. All right, so let's go ahead and mix this all together with the hand mixer and then we can get these in the oven. Okay, so that is all mixed. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, I already opened these, but I wanted to see how big they were before. Um, these uh, ginger snap cookies, and I'm gonna put them at the bottom, and this is gonna be like, like as if you were making a graham cracker pie, and you're using the graham cracker as the, the um, crust for the, um, pumpkin pie or you know pumpkin cheesecake pie I should say and hopefully it's perfect because they, they fit right at the bottom and I think I'm hoping that it tastes okay um, I do want to try it the way Liz's mom makes it as well because I'm going to be honest with you my kids are not big on pumpkin and either, or cheesecake, I should say, and either is my husband. So um, these are going to the neighbors or something because I cannot eat 24 cupcakes on my own. <laughs> but you never know because, you know, they'll taste it. They might like it. Okay, so I put down the um, ginger snap cookies in the cupcake liners. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and let me get a spoon and we will the mixture into each cupcake and you know I really do need to get a, um, a cookie scoop because I'm gonna need it for 
um, the Disney uh, Christmas bake mist that I'm doing. Probably it'll be here before we know it. So I do have to get one. Okay. And I guess I'm just doing about a tablespoon. We'll see how much. I'm going to do a little bit at a time right now. And then we'll see, you know, how much is left over. Maybe we need to go back and fill them again. Okay. These cupcake holders are not wanting to be neat. Okay. Let me speed this up. So they are all filled. Um, I try to make them even, you know, you know how that goes. Um, but they are all ready to go in the oven. I've been preheating the oven for, um, what is it, 350 degrees. And these will go in the oven uh, for about 40 minutes. So um, I'll show you what they look like okay, when they so come those out. are in the oven. They have to be in there 40 minutes. Once they come out and they cool off, they go into the refrigerator for, I think it said about three hours. Um, and then what I'm going to do, I was thinking of topping them with Cool Whip and then taking some of the ginger snap cookies, crushing them up, and then putting them on top of the uh, Cool Whip, on top of the cupcake. <laughs> anyway, I will show you what they look like when they come out of the hey, oven. Friends, I just took them out of the oven. Um, they look pretty even, all of them. I'm, the only thing that annoys me <laughs> is the cupcake wrapper being like, like it's like, burnt a little. I don't even know why that would be a thing, but uh, <laughs> apparently it did. But anyway, they do look good. They smell delicious. We're going to go ahead and let them cool off, put them in the refrigerator for two to three hours, and uh, then I'll show you how I'm going to decorate them. Okay, so this is what they look like after they've um, been in the refrigerator for a while. I I like the way they look. I did take a few out of the wrappers. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, I wish um, that the cupcake wrapper didn't turn brown on some of them. I don't know why that happened. I'm going to put some whipped cream on these and, um, and then I'm going to show you what it looks like when you take them out of the wrapper. Okay, so let's try this without, <laughs> you know, I just have the ready whip. Okay, all right, so what I wanted to do was take the, the ginger snap cookies and put them on top. Um, I was gonna crush them up, but I think I might just stick them all in as one solid one. I changed my mind. I think I'm just gonna dust them with a little bit of cinnamon. I think it looks prettier, um, to me anyway. So let me just do a little bit on each one, if I can ever get it to come out. Oh yeah, that's better. I like that better. So it does look a little bit more festive. <laughs> so this is what it looks like when it comes out. It's not smooth. I, I don't know. <laughs> but you have the cookie on the bottom. This is what it looks like. I think um, I am going to go ahead and taste it and I'll let you know what it, um, how it is. Um, I want to just put some whipped cream, of course, on this. Um, but that's it. I think that they came out really cute. I think this would be great for... Um, a dessert for Thanksgiving or Thanksgiving weekend that you're having maybe uh, family over or something. Um, it's like little mini, well, they are mini uh, pumpkin cheesecakes. <laughs> okay, my friends, that is it for my Friendsgiving collaboration part. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, hand it over to Rick and he is going to share his seasonal cocktail with you. Go ahead, Rick. Hey, it's Trader Rick, and I'm back again for another collaboration video with my friend Joanne, which if you don't follow Joanne on social media, you really need to check out all of her social media, uh, her YouTube channel, as well as her website, a lot of excellent cooking recipes and Disney dishes in particular. Uh, but for today, Joanne asked me to be a part of a special Friendsgiving celebration she's doing. And with Friendsgiving, you've got the opportunity for lots of great recipes, uh, all kinds of different cooking and baking. But it's also the perfect time to share cocktails. And for today, she asked me to prepare a nice Friendsgiving fall cocktail for you. And uh, 
the holidays are one of my favorite times and it's a favorite time of year to fix particular cocktails that really go with the season. So today we're going to be fixing a Harvest Sangria, which a sangria is great because of the combination of flavors as well as the fact you can make a big batch to share with friends and family. So let's get started for today. Uh, the first thing we're going to be adding to our uh, sangria is I've got a whole bottle of white wine we're going to be adding and I'm adding a Moscato. Um, Wines and sangria, it's up to your personal preference. A lot of us may like reds instead in a sangria to go with the fruits. A Prosecco can also be used as well. But for today, for this recipe, I opted to go with a little bit more subtle white wine uh, to go with the flavors. So we're gonna be adding in our white wine, whole bottle of it. Next ingredient to give it more of that harvest flavor is we're gonna use some apple cider. I'm adding today a cup and a half of apple cider. So we're adding apple cider. To contribute to the alcohol in it, we're also going to be adding one of my favorites, bourbon. A lot of different bourbons you can use, whichever your preference. I'm going with some Davies County and I'm going to be adding two ounces of bourbon to it. Now, we've got our alcohol itself and our main ingredient, the cider. We're gonna add some of the extra ingredients to it now. First thing I've got here is to give it some of that holiday zing and flavor. I'm a huge fan of cranberry. So what I've got here is I've actually prepared ahead of time. This is a cranberry syrup. And it's basically cranberry with simple syrup added to it been cooked down and you could store that in the fridge to have for other recipes as well. So we're going to be adding that. To give it a little bit more of that fall flavor, we're also going to be adding in an ounce and a half of maple syrup. And in our household, 100% pure maple syrup is what's used. Nothing what's high fructose corn syrup, natural maple syrup. So now we have our basic ingredients added in. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of a stir. Now we're gonna add some of our fruit. You can add a variety of fruits to a sangria. Uh, some of the favorites though that I have, I've got some oranges. Look at that nice color going in. And for harvest purposes, we've got some apple to add to it. And to give it a nice little stir here and a little bit more flavor, once again, I've got some whole cranberries we're gonna get. Cranberries give it some nice color and a little bit more tartness to it. And with that, we have our harvest sangria. It's my suggestion you let this sit. You could possibly let it sit overnight. Uh, let it sit actually in the uh, refrigerator so it gives a little bit more taste to it and the flavors can all combine. We're going to add one last ingredient to it to really give it that holiday flavor and that's cinnamon sticks. So put those down in and voila, we have a harvest sangria. Nice thing about this is it's perfect for sharing with friends and family. And with that, I hope you have a very nice Friendsgiving and a happy holiday season. And that is it for our Friendsgiving collaboration. I would like to thank everybody who uh, joined me today in this collaboration. A big uh, thank you to Kathy, big thank you to Rick, and a big thank you to Doug and Tammy. I appreciate everybody joining in this year, and I hope that we could do it next year, maybe add more people and make it a little bigger as well. I'm gonna go ahead and link everybody's uh, YouTube channel and Rick's social media accounts. And uh, please feel free to go and check out their video, see what they're making for the collaboration, and please consider subscribing and following along with them. Um, I think you'll really enjoy all of their channels and their content. Thank you so much for being with us this week. I wish you and your family a very happy, healthy, and uh, tasty Thanksgiving. See you next week.